As many of you may know, Razer is a gaming brand. When you think about Razer, you think about gaming peripherals, gaming laptops, gaming accessories. They actually just recently got into PC components like cases, AIOs, chroma fans, you name it. If you remember last year, they introduced the Razerbook 13, which was their gateway into the productivity market. And it was a great laptop. You can actually check out my review right over here to learn more about it. They've been working on expanding that ecosystem with accessories that could fit your work setup. And today we have a few peripherals on the table that completes that. Uh, the first one is a wireless mechanical keyboard called the ProType Ultra, which is this one. And then we have the ProClick Mini uh, wireless mouse, uh, which is basically a slimmed down version of the ProClick version that was launched a while back. Now, Mike and I have been using these things for the past few months, uh, way before the official launch, because Razer was kind enough to send us uh, some early samples. Um, so let's just find out what the deal is with um, this new Pro setup. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Ooh, I see you've been working on your core. When you core, you got a P6. The new Thermaltake Core P6 TG enclosure is for those with core priorities on displaying your beautiful hardware in this wall mountable, fully modular frame and a transferable core to switch between closed and an open design. The interior, of course, is fully ready for your fans, radiators, built in vertical GPU mount with a support bracket, lots of IO options at the front, and is available in black or white snow editions. The Core P6 is built for makers. Check it out below. All right, as always, I want to kick things off with the price. The ProClick Mini costs $80, which is $20 cheaper than the ProClick wireless mouse. The ProType Ultra costs a whopping $160. Now, if we look at the competition, the first thing that comes to my mind that competes with the ProClick Mini is the Logitech MX Anywhere 3 mouse. Uh, that thing is literally, it's exactly the same uh, in terms of shape and features wise. It's a little bit different. Uh, but I'll let Mike chime in on his experience using the MX Mini a little bit later in the video. But uh, right now, I just want to focus on the ProType Ultra because this thing is a really unique piece that's catered towards a very specific type of audience. Uh, so for starters, the design is very sleek and uh, it complements the rest of Razer's Pro lineup. So the frame is made out of anodized aluminum while the rest of the chassis is plastic. Uh, build quality is solid with minimal flex around the frame. And um, if you're coming from something like you know, a basic $20 to $30 keyboard, this is certainly a huge upgrade. I also like the white and silver contrast since it blends in with the rest of Razer's Pro lineup. And um, you can also tell that they've taken a page out of the gaming keyboards. Now, this is a full-size keyboard, which I'm sure will come in handy for professionals who work with a lot of numbers. Uh, I know people who work in the healthcare industry and they rely on numpads. So this is a very thoughtful inclusion. The keycaps themselves are the basic ABS plastic materials. So nothing surprising here. Uh, I am a little disappointed with the text positioning with some of the keys since they're off centered and you can certainly tell the difference when you compare it to the rest of the keys that are actually centered. Uh, so Razer, please address this very soon with your future batch because that is a definitely a QC issue. They've also added a soft touch coating to resist fingerprints and improve comfort while typing. While that is true, having used a lot of mechanical keyboards, I actually don't see the soft texture adding a significant difference in that area. Um, now, given that it's white, it's probably going to be easier to clean because um, uh, you know you don't have to worry about dirt or grime getting stuck with uh, sort of a rougher texture if you had that with the keycaps. So I guess that's a benefit. Um, you also get two adjustable kickstands integrated at the bottom uh, to angle the keyboard to your preferred setting. Um, so you either have six degrees or a nine degree setting. And the bottom rubber feet do a pretty good job keeping the keyboard in place. Razer also includes a soft touch cushioned wrist rest that doesn't clip onto the keyboard, but it sort of aligns with the frame and Guys, let me just tell you, this is probably the best addition to your setup because it just elevates your comfort experience when you're spending hours in front of a display, uh, writing up emails, or just dealing with management stuff. Now, this is a mechanical keyboard. So naturally, we have to talk about 
these switches. Uh, so the ProType Ultra comes with Razer's yellow switches. Uh, I'm going to link to Dimitri's fantastic video going over the switch options that Razer offers, including the Razer yellows. But in a nutshell, uh, these are linear switches that somewhat align with MX speeds. So they're very fast with an actuation point of 1.2 millimeters with a total travel distance of 3.5 millimeters. Since these are linear and not tactile or clicky, you don't have to worry about them annoying people around you in the office. Plus, Razer has added sound dampening foam to quiet things down even more. So why don't we go ahead and take a listen. The keyboard is backlit in white, and uh, it does get bright enough to view the text in low-light situations. Uh, you can actually adjust the brightness levels in 15 increments using the function keys. Now, if you're using a Mac, I do have some bad news for you. This keyboard isn't officially supported with that OS. Now, technically, it will work over Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz receiver, but um, you won't be able to take advantage of all the commands that are strictly Mac-focused. So. I personally think this is a missed opportunity for Razer because Logitech supports both PC and Mac uh, with their pro-level keyboards. And considering you know this thing costs $160 US, um, it just makes me question if Razer even thought about the pro users uh, in the market because you know people still use Mac and they want something that functions with both platforms. As for connectivity, there are two ways to pair this keyboard. You either can go with Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz mode using the included receiver. Um, there is a switch at the front to enable uh, either of those modes. And there is a compartment underneath the keyboard to store uh, the receiver, which is awesome, so you don't have to worry about losing that. And if you're wondering, you can use a single receiver to pair the ProClick Mini as well. Uh, so that'll save you an extra USB port on your PC. Keep in mind that that can only be done using the multi-device pairing feature through Razer Synapse. Um, if you're using Bluetooth mode, you can actually pair up to three devices on this keyboard, and that can be done with the function and one, two, and three keys. Uh, the LED indicator right above the numpad will show you the status uh, when it's activated. When it comes to battery life, Razer is claiming up to nine days of use without any backlighting using the Bluetooth mode. And if you switch over to 2.4 gigahertz mode, expense around eight days of use. Uh, now, if you enable the full brightness setting, that'll actually dramatically reduce the battery life to 13 hours. And for my testing, uh, that's exactly the number that I got, or roughly the numbers that I got uh, using the ProType Ultra. But when you put it up against the competition like the MX keys from Logitech, it's actually a bit less. And, uh, and that's because I struggled to kill that keyboard in a few months with the backlighting turned on and off. This, on the other hand, is a mechanical keyboard. So that's another factor to consider when you're shopping around. My recommendation is to plug this thing once a week uh, just to juice up the battery if you use it in hybrid mode. Um, you can also monitor the battery status through Razer Synapse software. And Razer does include a USB-C to USB Type-A charging cable to uh, charge up uh, the device. Last but not least, I want to quickly go over the ProClick Mini. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is something that I will never use in my life. Uh, since I have really large hands. I mean, as you can see by that comparison, it just says it all. Uh, so using this thing on a regular basis, uh, it was just really uncomfortable. Now, sure, I get the idea that it's slim, sleek, and easy to carry around while traveling, which is why I let Mike test this out since he travels quite a bit and he has small hands. Also, as he was testing this, um, Razer was supposed to call it the ProClick Mobile, which is why when he mentions it, he's going to mention mobile instead of mini because clearly they changed that to the very last minute. So Mike, take it away, man. All right, guys. So Eber asked me to hop on camera and talk a little bit about my experience with the ProClick Mobile. And that's because I've actually had it on hand now for almost five months. So I have a little bit longer term perspective about this thing. Razer sent us here in Montreal, a prototype just to check it out and to give them a little bit of feedback. So it's an early sample, but I've got a couple of opinions about it. First of all, let's talk about that mobile part. The mobile part means two things to me. Number one is size and weight, because when I'm traveling, and I've traveled with this thing a few times, those are the two primary things that I'm looking for. 
anything that I carry with me has to be lightweight because I don't want it sort of weighing down my backpack too much and it has to be small. Well, small, they nailed it, all right? So this thing compared to the regular Pro Click, it's tiny. Not only that, my usual sort of mouse that I use when I travel is the G403. It's smaller than that too. The interesting thing though is because it has two replaceable AA batteries in there, it actually weighs more than either of these two mice. But there's a little way around that. So first of all, Razer, bless their hearts, they made sure that this thing could run off of only one single AA battery. The other option that I've sort of looked towards is using a AA to AAA adapter to cut down the weight even more. Of course, that affects battery life, but I'm gonna talk about that in a bit. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention about this is something that some of you might be cringing about, and that's the fact that it uses replaceable batteries. Personally, I usually have an issue with that because of the environment, but I also don't like having a built-in battery because if you're traveling, you're always looking for you know, a charger or whatever. So, in this case, I'm using exactly what I would recommend to you guys, and that is rechargeable batteries inside of this mouse. Helps with the environment a little and you get amazing battery life. And about that battery life, I actually can't comment because after almost five months, the original batteries that I put in this thing, well, they're still going. The last couple of things I wanted to talk about is of course just the general experience over the last five months. And to me, this thing has stood the, I, I can't say test of time, but at the same time, there's no blemishes on this thing from the schmoo in my hands. I've been using this as a daily driver every single day. So like eight hours a day here at the office, it works really, really well. Ergonomically, that's where some people might have a little bit of an issue with it. Because it's a mobile mouse, of course, it's so tiny. For my hands, it works sort of okay, but for longer term, I enjoy using something that is very much ergonomically designed like the Pro Click itself. On the other hand, if you're using this on a daily basis, I would not recommend it for anybody who has larger hands. A couple of people here in the office tried to use it for a day or two at a time, and they did complain about a little bit of hand cramping. Luckily though, everything else about it, the build quality, the fact that you have a little compartment in here for the dongle, everything about it is what I would look for in a mobile mouse. So I guess that's pretty much it for me. I absolutely love this thing. Right now while I'm recording this, I'm not quite sure about what the price is, but if it's under 100 bucks, Razer really nailed it. So back to you, Eber. Well, Mike, uh, good news is that the price for the ProClick Mini is under $100. And as I mentioned earlier, that goes head to head with the MX Anywhere 3 mouse from Logitech. Now, feature-wise, the MX mouse has an integrated battery that can be charged uh, over USB Type-C. The sense of performance on this guy was actually really, really good. It was amazing. I didn't have any issues with tracking. Uh, Razer's actually using an advanced uh, optical sensor. It's great for navigating through applications on a day-to-day -day basis. They've also added a free spin mode, which basically lets a scroll wheel spin in freestyle, depending on how much force you give the scroll wheel. So this will be useful if you're working with longer documents or spreadsheets. Uh, there is a tilt function, which I'm sure will come in handy with certain applications. Now, it's certainly not as good as Logitech's MagSafe system because uh, that automatically shifts between tactile mode and free spin mode. Uh, and there's a little bit of weight to that. So I just find the Logitech stuff to be a little bit more premium, whereas this just seems a little bit basic. Um, finally, I wanna go over the switches. Now, Razer opted to go with silent mechanical mouse switches, which offers a quiet, distraction-free experience when you click away. They're also very durable for up to 15 million clicks. And honestly, it just feels like I'm clicking a dampening material right underneath the primary left and right buttons. Uh, it's somewhere between tactile and mushy. Um, just take a listen for yourselves. Now, this is a thoughtful feature for those who value a silent experience when using peripherals. But ironically, when you pair the Pro Click Mini to the Pro Type Ultra, it just takes away from that silent aspect because this thing is, 
it's really loud and it's just not consistent when you use these devices together. So that's something to keep in mind when you're shopping around. I should also mention that all these buttons are programmable through Razer Snap software, but if you look at the competition once again, Logitech actually has pre-built profiles for applications like Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and Microsoft applications. So that's another benefit going with the MX Anywhere 3 or just any MX uh, peripheral or MX product. Um, so here's a takeaway with these new Pro peripherals from Razer. I'm gonna start things off with the Pro uh, Type Ultra. You see, this thing is a good start for Razer because it's a very unique piece, as I mentioned at the beginning, because you get, you're get you getting a wireless mechanical keyboard uh, with really good battery life and a great comfort experience when you're typing away. Unfortunately, it's a bit louder for my taste. And not to mention the fact that it doesn't support macOS is a huge downside. And for $160, I, I just believe that it's way too overpriced. The ProClick Mini is a great mouse. Uh, it's quiet, compact, sleek, and has fantastic battery life. Then again, you have to remember that you need to use two AA batteries to get this thing you know, set up instead of uh, charging it over a cable. And for $80, it's a great alternative to the MX Anywhere 3 mouse. If you're looking for something that's completely white and, you know, just matches with the rest of the Pro lineup. From Razer, of course. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to cover everything that uh, you need to know about the new Razer productivity peripherals. Um, let us know what you guys think about the Pro Type Ultra and the Pro Click Mini. Uh, if you're shopping around for something uh, to sort of fit your productivity setup, would this be on your list? I'm really curious to know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.